Welcome to the Arc Fight Battery, your power source for all things Warcraft Rumble related. In today's video, I've got an updated PvP leader tier list for the new modifier uh, with the enchant and the regular arrow tower. Uh, we have Heroes Resolve now, so that means every time you play your leader, it's going to gain an extra level. So, very excited for that. It changes up the meta quite a bit, actually. Um, we've seen a lot of Gargoyle decks with Deep Breath and polymorph things like that kind of more expensive decks to a transition to more cycle based decks with certain leaders but you still have to respect gargoyle so that you don't lose to that so let's go ahead and get into the tier list so first we have dracosath we are going to put him in high b tier or low a tier this guy's a little difficult because he's so expensive and you always kind of want to play him with a supporting unit. So like a Shaman or an Ogre Mage or something like that. Something that buffs him. And that's a lot of gold. It makes it hard to cycle back around to him. Though if you can control gold veins and chests in the middle pretty well. Then you can have some pretty good success with him. I played against a couple of Dracosaths uh, in the meta already. And they're fine. Uh, as long as your deck isn't weak to them, they're not a huge deal, but he's also not bad either. There are some pretty um, good things you can do, like Holy Nova, to have a lot of counterplay to certain things. But it's kind of the, the curse of Gargoyle too. Like, your deck needs to be able to beat a Gargoyle to exist in the meta, um, and the things that beat Gargoyle also pretty much beat Dracoset. So, I think he's high B, potentially low A, but we're going to keep him at high B for now. Next, we have Emperor Thorasan, and he's going to be straight up in high A tier. This guy is super solid. You can play him a couple of ways. You can play him with Ghoul and Harvest Golem um, in more of a cycle-based deck to have large Harvest Golems and Ghouls with his uh, Hubris talent. And you can also play him with just Gargoyle, like you normally do, and then protect him and try and end the game quickly. But if you play the cycle build, you can get pretty high uh, Emperor Thorosands, and they're actually pretty solid when they're uh, a higher level, especially when supported by a higher level tank in front of them, even though he's kind of a tank himself. So, very solid. Definitely super sweet A tier. Next we have Thalnos. Ah, he's going to be low C tier. Um, not great. This helps him a little bit, but not more than it helps other leaders, since he's already 4 gold. Um, and generally the things that you are playing to cycle him um, are okay. Like Chain Lightning, Smoke Bomb, maybe Arcane Blast. Uh, but then the things you use to support him, like Holy Nova, are more expensive than what you really want to be doing if you're trying to cycle back to him, even though it does give him an extra level. Um... It's, yeah, he's okay. Not great. It didn't really help him that much. Then we have Baron. Um, Baron's going to be low B tier, unfortunately. So, with the recent fix to Bounty Hunt, now his skeletons are counting towards that modifier. So, as you kill them, you get bonus gold. He's just okay. He's nothing crazy. He's not as amazing as he was. He'll be amazing again once Bounty Hunt goes away, but... Since they fixed that, he's just kind of good enough. Um, Cairn, I think, is probably in B tier with Dracosath and uh, Mr. Baron here. I think that you could play a pretty aggressive cycle build with him. Uh, Stun Duration seems to scale with level, or at least it does for Bandits, I've noticed, where Bandits are great at defending your base against Hogger, um, but... Eventually, once Hogger's level gets so high, the stun duration doesn't last nearly as long, and so they're just kind of meh. So, my thought is that if you can play an aggressive cycle deck with Cairn, you can cycle him to where his stun just lasts a huge amount of time, and it's also useful against Hogger. So, I haven't tested it, but I do think he's probably B tier, probably somewhere in between Draxath and Baron, or potentially at the same level of Baron. It's really hard to tell without having tested him, but I do think he's solid. Next is Charlga, and I think this leader is definitely A tier. Um, I'm sure there will be a video about it soon. Um, Legendary uh, played him once the other night, and he absolutely smoked me. Uh, Charlga is insane in this modifier. You play a super aggressive cycle Charlga deck with like Griffin Rider, Murlocs, uh, maybe Bandits or Vultures, Quillbore, just a bunch of two cost things, and then, like one thing like Polymorph or Deep Breath to make sure that you don't lose to Gargoyle. Uh, you, you always gotta pass the gargoyle check. Uh, however, 
man, this doing percentage health damage and, and being able to just cycle back to it insanely quickly is absolutely nuts. Um, I'm super excited to play this build, and like I said, Legendary will have a video out about it soon. I'm almost positive, and I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm sure I'm going to be in that video. <laughs> okay, moving along to Gromosh. Um, definitely A tier. This guy is awesome. I made a video about him earlier. Um, he trades really well into all the other melee minis, like Hogger, um, like Tyrion, but only if you're running the, I think it's the Savage Strikes talent, which makes him do 50%, or more damage to things that are at 50% health, or lower. So, he, he goes really well being scaled, so I'm sure there's a cycle deck that is... Um, fantastic with him. Maybe you'll have to drop out Huntress and like the cheat death holy note thing that I showcased a couple of days ago, but the cycle deck would be fantastic with him. Probably Murlocs, um, Bandits, things like that. Things to take advantage of Bloodlust and some other things to support him. Um, maybe there's a couple three gold things like Holy Nova that could be potentially good. Maybe cheat death, but I'm guessing it would just be a cycle deck. Now, moving on to the main star of the show, Hogger. I think he's probably S tier. He has been fantastic so far. Being 4 gold and having his leader ability increase his stats every time you play him, though it caps at 3, is still really good. It makes these giant, like, tempo swings because you're playing him at the beginning to claim treasure chests and just control those. He's not super strong yet, but then by the time you've played him for a third time, you got 3 extra levels on him. And he's fully stacked. I mean, it's it's just so good. Eventually, he's just so much pressure that it's very hard for your uh, opponent to respond to. Now, I will say, Charlga is very good at responding to it. Um, being able to root Hogger in place, uh, especially like in your base's safe zone to where they can't really do anything, pretty solid. Especially because Hogger is fast. Um, so when one gets to your base... Potentially, there's another one that's already very close to your base. Um, you can cycle pretty quickly with Charos. Uh, so if you need to find another Charolga for the second Hogger, you absolutely can do that. It's probably one of the only decks that can cycle back to an answer that quickly. Um, that being said, he is very strong. Probably the strongest leader to take advantage of Hero's Resolve. And definitely S tier. Uh, Charolga is high A, I would say. I think she's probably above ET. Um, but she's, she's very solid too. Uh, Jaina. I think she is B tier. I think she's probably a little above Baron. She just doesn't do a lot um, for Heroes Resolve. Like, her leveling up doesn't really increase the usefulness of her passive, which is just spells get plus three levels because her leveling up doesn't change that. Um, and then she is a decent unit. She's good against, like, Griffin Rider and Drake, but she's not super good against, like, say, Hogger. Um... I don't know. She just doesn't scale as well as other leaders with Heroes Resolve. So, I think she's probably B tier. Next, we have Maev. And I believe she's A tier. I haven't played with her yet, this patch. Um, but I do believe that she will be super solid. The only downside you may find is that a lot of the times you're holding on to Maev longer than you would mainly... Uh, or rather, longer than you normally would with Heroes Resolve. Just because you're wanting to play her in a good situation where you can get value out of her from her fan of knives when she unstealths so you're not always just jamming her onto the board every time you can but that being said being able to reduce her cost um just by playing the things you're already cycling to find her again is super solid um yeah probably the cheapest leader you can play besides charlga to take advantage of this and that really helps so i think she's probably under emperor thorasan but higher than gramosh next we have murkai uh this leader is also b tier now that Bounty Hunt has been fixed, so probably somewhere between Baron and Cairn, or Baron and Jaina. She's just somewhere around here. Once again, fine, just not great with Heroes Resolve. It'll be better once um, Heroes Resolve, or sorry, not great with Bounty Hunt. It'll be better once Bounty Hunt is gone out of the meta. Um, next we have Rind. I think Rind is probably A tier, though not a lot of people are playing him right now. 
He scales really well, so probably above Maev, just because he is 6 gold. It's hard to cycle back to him, but you can play some aggressive cycle decks with him, maybe not taking as much advantage of his passive as you normally would, and probably not playing Gargoyle either. You're not really wanting to play 4 gold units, or a lot of them, um, when you're trying to cycle back to Rind, but he's still really solid. Um... And you don't need Gargoyle either, because once Brynn gets a couple levels, he will act like a Gargoyle. He will absolutely crush the enemy's bases if he gets to them. And because he's on his dragon first, and then he's on, uh, you know, the ground, super solid. Love him, love him, love him. Next, we have Sneed. Probably C tier. Don't think he's super great. Um, especially right now, Gadget Sand is not in play, which was his strongest map. Um, I guess there's some bugs with it, and they took it out of the game to fix it, but that's just how it goes. Um, yeah, he's also 6 gold. You know, like, he can generate a lot of gold, especially if he's opening treasure chests, so you could cycle back to him quicker, but Gadget Sand's not in currently, and there are a lot of big siege units like Warsong Raider um, or Gargoyle that I think Sneed wants to play, and Heroes Resolve just doesn't really allow you to take advantage of, well, Heroes Resolve if you play those giant units. So, I think it's probably C tier. Once Heroes Resolve rotates out and Gadget Sand back in, maybe he gets a little higher, but that's the wait and see. Then we have Sylvanas. Once again, C tier. Just kind of, eh. Six gold is expensive. Um, you know, there are a lot of good cycle decks with her, but... 6 gold for something that doesn't scale as well as Rind, and, I mean, the passive is awful. Um, I guess maybe when Sylvanas dies, the Banshee would be the same level, and that might be your saving grace. Um, but, I don't know, I think she's probably okay. You're not going to be able to play very many of her during a match, especially if you run into things like Hogger, that are just going to steamroll you over before you can play a couple of Sylvanas's. And the next... Last but not least, Tyrion, I think. Tyrion is probably A tier. I think he's probably somewhere in this range between Rind and Grom. So, I think he's very good. Um, being able to cycle, playing an aggressive cycle build, uh, which is something I've been doing lately. I've been really enjoying it. It is weak to Charlga, um, but it's also weak to Dracosath for whatever reason. Dracosath still goes through Tyrion's bubble sometimes. Like, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes it does. It's super weird. But um, being able to get a bunch of levels on Tyrion's and then match a couple of them up has been absolutely insane. Um, I've had it to where I get four Tyrion's on top of each other uh, when you play things like Hogger. Um, just because you'll fight the Hogger for a long time, so you have the ability to cycle back. You open some treasure chests, you get a couple... Tyrion's on the field that all meet up at one point and it is insane sometimes but yeah there's our tier list I hope you guys liked it um I will be doing a tier list from now on every time the um the modifier enchant or tower changes so once every two weeks and we will be looking at leaders and units so there will be a unit video coming probably in a couple of days maybe maybe Friday maybe Wednesday. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, that's our leader tier list. Um, I will have guides as well for a couple of these heroes coming shortly after this, um, this tier list. Probably next week. I want to make sure I get you guys the builds with enough time left to play the end of the season to hopefully push to that emote or whatever your goal is for this season. Um, yeah, everyone's got different goals. I just want to make sure I can help the most I also have a Discord, speaking of helping, it'll be linked in the description below. We've got a big community right now, probably a hundred people um, that are in it. People are talking daily, asking questions, um, talking about the game in general. So it's been a blast, happy to have everybody there. And please, if you have any questions about a build or just wondering how you would play a leader uh, that you see on this tier list, let me know in the comments below or hop in the Discord and ask me. Happy to, ask, uh, to answer questions anywhere. So. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, bye.